oxidation reactions of alcohols. Just for a quick review, we've already seen reduction, right, where if we treat a carboxylic acid, which is the most oxidized a carbon can be, with two equivalents of lithium aluminum hydride followed by water, we get a primary alcohol. And the oxidation number of this carbon is 4 minus 1, which equals 3. And the oxidation number of this carbon over here, we've got 4 minus 5 is minus 1. So this is reduction. Right? So going back the other way, if we oxidize this once, we'll get an aldehyde. And if we oxidize twice, we'll get back to the carboxylic acid. And just to show you that the aldehyde is an intermediate oxidation state, the oxidation number here, 4 minus 3, that's 1. Right, so what are the oxidizing agents that we're going to use? If we start with a primary alcohol, we need a moderately strong oxidizing agent to get to an aldehyde. But to get completely oxidized, to go from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, we need something that is really strong. If we've got a secondary alcohol, we can oxidize to a ketone, but we cannot go any further. And that's just because we don't have a second proton at this point to remove. Tertiary alcohols don't have any alpha protons, so we can't oxidize them. And you know, that makes sense because if we somehow put a carbonyl here, well, that would violate the octet rule. So what we want is chromic acid. Uh, this is the strongest oxidizing agent. Yeah, Jones, Jones reagent, chromic acid, is the only oxidizing agent that can take you all the way to an aldehyde. So if you're starting with a primary alcohol and you want, I'm sorry, not um, aldehyde, but carboxylic acid, any oxidizing agent will get you to um, aldehyde, but only chromic acid will take you all the way to a carboxylic acid. Now, people don't just have chromic acid sitting on their shelves. You have to generate it in situ, and there's two ways we can do that. One is chromium trioxide with hydronium and acetone. That'll generate Jones reagent. The other is sodium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and water. So that'll generate chromic acid. If you see an alcohol, like 2-butanol, being reacted with chromium trioxide and H3O plus and acetone. The acetone, you know, you could also write it like this or like this with the O in parentheses. Then you're going to get oxidation, right? That's Jones reagent. Another way we could show it is sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and water. So, these are two ways of generating Jones reagent in situ. The first stage of the reaction mechanism of an alcohol with Jones reagent is proton transfer. The chromic acid donates its proton to the alcohol. So now we've got water, which is a good leaving group, 
And this bichromate ion can do nucleophilic attack with loss of a leaving group at the alpha carbon. So that SN2 process gives us this chromate ester. And so the generation of the chromate ester is all considered stage one, those two steps, the proton transfer and then SN2. And then stage two, we have water, a weak base, um, essentially doing uh, E2 attack on the chromate ester. It's going to attack that proton there. So here we go. Here's water taking that proton. And that turns into a pi bond. And then we've got loss of a leaving group. Right, so that's E2. And here is the carbonyl that was produced as a result of oxidizing our original alcohol. And we also get this HOCRO2 or HCRO3 minus ion. And uh, I bet that the negative charge sits on the oxygen because I bet we have something like that happening, a pi bond turning into a lone pair. Also, protonating this water gives us a hydronium. So hydronium is another one of our products. And all of this, after the formation of the chromate ester, this is stage two, which is slower and not reversible. Jones reagent is strong and not selective, meaning it will oxidize as far as it can oxidize. If you start with a primary alcohol, Jones reagent will take you all the way to a carboxylic acid. So you'd need something that's more selective if you wanted to make an aldehyde. So what would that more selective reagent be? We could use pyridinium chlorochromate in dichloromethane. Pyridinium chlorochromate is a pyridinium. The chlorochromate ion is just chromium trioxide or chromium 6 oxide with a chloride ion added to it to give you something that has one chromium 6 ion, three oxide ions, and a chloride ion with a net charge of minus one, chlorochromate ion. So PCC is the combination of these two ions and PCC will take you from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde but it will not go further. It will not make a carboxylic acid. Now, if you have a secondary alcohol, you don't need to worry about choosing between Jones and PCC because the furthest you can be oxidized is to go to a ketone, right? So whether we use the Jones reagent, which is not selective, or the PCC, the pyridinium chlorochromate, we're just gonna to go to a ketone. But we should note that both Jones reagent and PCC contain a chromium 6 ion, which is like cancer in a bottle. It is seriously toxic. We would like to avoid it, if at all possible. The Swern oxidation uses dimethyl sulfoxide and oxalyl chloride to generate chlorodimethyl sulfonium in situ and the chlorodimethyl sulfonium then acts as an oxidizing agent. And it'll take a secondary alcohol all the way to a ketone. It'll take a primary alcohol all the way to an aldehyde, but it won't go to a carboxylic acid. You don't need to know this mechanism, but you do need to know the reagent and the outcome. So the reagents for the Swern oxidation are dimethyl sulfoxide and oxalyl chloride and it'll take a secondary alcohol to a ketone and it'll take a primary alcohol to an aldehyde.
Swern will not take a primary alcohol all the way to a carboxylic acid. The only oxidizing agent that we can use for that is Jones. There's also the Desmartin pariodinane. Here's DMP. And um, we're not even going to bother trying to show the mechanism, but it has the same net result as um, the Swern oxidation. So the same outcomes, primary alcohol to aldehyde and secondary alcohol to ketone. And what it looks like in a synthesis is DMP with CH2Cl2 as the solvent. That's dichloromethane. So here's an exercise for you. We've got this compound that contains two alcohols and an aldehyde, and we're reacting it with Jones reagent, and that's going to oxidize everything all the way as far as can be. So pause and figure out the answer. So we've got a secondary alcohol and a primary alcohol. Jones will take the secondary alcohol to a ketone and the primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. And this aldehyde will also go to a carboxylic acid, right? Because Jones oxidizes things all the way. So here's the ketone that was formed from our secondary alcohol. Here's the carboxylic acid that was formed from our primary alcohol. And here is the carboxylic acid that was formed from our aldehyde over here. So now we can go both directions. We can reduce carbonyls and we can oxidize um, alcohols.